thank you, Sam. So again, uh, it's nice to uh, to see uh, all the friends and colleagues uh, once again. So uh, before I start, I would like to thank the scientific committee for inviting me to talk about this topic. Okay, so uh, to begin, I have nothing to disclose. Life uh, expectancy in, this, in, in the Philippines is steadily increasing. From 55 years old in the 1950s to 71.5 uh, to this year. And it, it is still projected to increase in the future. With the aging population, adult spinal deformity is also projected to rise. And one particular aspect is primary degenerative sagittal imbalance, which has a great impact on health-related quality of life. Lumbar lordosis is unique to the human spine. This allows us to walk in an upright posture with little effort. Majority of the, the lordosis comes from the intervertebral disc. So uh, the rest is provided by the shape of the vertebral body. Lumbar uh, spine is said to be an evolutionary weak point of the vertebral column because it is the first to be affected and it's the most commonly affected of the degenerative changes. This degeneration is multifactorial. And it could be due to aging, mechanical overload, genetics, and environmental factors. The nucleus pulposus is primarily water. So this enormous water content is the one responsible for the shape of the disc, the disc height, and the shock absorbing capacity of the disc. Disc degeneration starts in the nucleus pulposus. The initiating event is the degradation of proto, uh, pro, uh, aggregating proteoglycans, specifically the agrican. Loss of this proteoglycan leads to disc desiccation and uh, decreased swelling pressure. This eventually leads to the uh, loss of disc height, which will lead to uh, structural changes and alteration of the biomechanical properties of the disc. Once loss of disc height happens and the uh, alteration of the biomechanical properties, a cascade of event takes place. So the load, uh, the weight bearing uh, load of the spine is shifted most, more posteriorly. Okay, so, so the, the line is trans, transferred more posteriorly, affecting the facet joints. This will lead to a facet hypertrophy and facet arthritis. Eventually, the, uh, there will be a, a remodeling and bones performation, collapse of the vertebral bodies, and atrophy of the external muscles leading to progressive loss of lumbar lordosis. It was Takemetsu who uh, first described lumbar degenerative kyphosis in 1998, or, sorry, in 1988, which uh, he attributed to a prolonged crouch posture, doing uh, agri agricultural work and activities of daily living. But later on, it was found out that uh, the generative sagittal uh, imbalance is multifactorial. He divided this uh, condition into four types, taking into account the kyphosis of the lumbar spine, also taking into account the status of the thoracic spine. Chang et al. further subdivided uh, sagittal plate deformity based on the etiology. And one uh, type of that is primary degenerative sagittal imbalance. There are three types of sagittal uh, balance. Type A is normal. So meaning to say the, the SVA falls to within 3 centimeters from the superior corner of S1. There is normal pelvic tilt. The lower limbs are completely extended in standing position. Type B is a compensated type, meaning the global balance is still normal. However, there is decrease in the sagittal curvature. There is a pelvic tilting or retroversion. This is the most common type seen in degenerative spine condition. 
In type C, this is the decompensated type. Okay? So there is already a positive SVA. So it falls outside the, the accepted normal value. There is pelvic retroversion. And there is already extension of the hips and flexion of the knees. It was uh, Professor uh, Jean Dubosay who uh, conceptualized the cone of economy. And according to uh, Dubosay, the center of mass should project as close as possible towards the center of a reduced polygon that is situated between the two feet. This is the area of small constant rebalancing effort. And it is only 7% energetically expensive compared to a uh, uh, supine position. If the center of mass tends to project outside of this polygon, rebalancing effort becomes much more important and it will cause pain to the patient. The pelvis must be considered as the first uh, vertebra according to Debussy. So the location of the base determines the position of the lumbar spine and hence the vertebral column. There are several parameters that we can measure to determine the position of the pelvis in relation to the vertebral column. One of these is pelvic tilt, or uh, sorry, uh, yeah, pelvic tilt. This is a positional parameter and measures pelvic rotation around the femoral head. The sacral slope also can tell us the, the axis of the, the sacrum, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Pelvic incidence is a morphologic variable unaffected by age and position of the pelvis. Larger pelvic incidents usually have larger rooms for compensation. During aging, compensation happens in three areas. Uh, one is the spine, the pelvis, and the lower limbs. So the first to be affected is the spine and the pelvis. So you have a uh, decrease of the sagittal curvatures, you have pelvic tilting to compensate, and it, in more advanced stage, you have the lower limbs as a, a, as a mode of compensation. So there's a already flexion of the, the knees. In a study by uh, Schwab et al., he found that uh, pelvic tilt of more than 22 degrees, pelvic incidence lumbar lordosis mismatch of more than 11 degrees, SVA of greater than 47 millimeters translated to poor health-related quality, quality of life. Okay, so also according to uh, Takemetsu, primary degenerative sagittal, sagittal balsas is commonly associated with the following. So you have uh, decreased uh, lumbar lordosis or lumbar kyphosis, disc space narrowing, collapse of vertebral bodies, and fatty degeneration of the extensor muscles that you can see uh, in your MRI. For the cardinal signs, you have forward stooping of the trunk, inability to hold things in front of oneself, elbow corns, and difficulty climbing slopes. For the diagnostic criteria, SVA is uh, 50 millimeters or more. The pelvic incidence lumbar mismatch is 15 degrees or more. Pelvic tilting of 25 degrees or more. And atrophy of the paraspinal musculature. For the treatment options, first line of treatment is still conservative. So consisting of exercise, physiotherapy, lifestyle modification, and analgesics. If non-operative treatment fails, surgery, will, uh, sur sur surgery is indicated. So uh, also, those with walking difficulty, intractable pain, severe sagittal imbalance, neural compromise, and mark, mark atrophy of the, the back musculatures are all indications for operative treatment. Now to share a case that I recently uh, did, so this is a case of an 85-year-old female who failed uh, conservative treatment. So he was given a physiotherapy program, steroid injection, analgesics for several months. 
all, uh, all failed. No? The patient's already uh, getting depressed due to uh, severe pain. So the, the measurement of pelvic incidence is 42 degrees with lumbar lordosis of 7 degrees. So you, you can see the big discrepancy. No? So around 35 degrees uh, pelvic incidence lumbar lordosis mismatch. Pelvic tilting is 32 degrees. It's very high. So uh, what I did, I, I just uh, uh, indicated for PLF from uh, L1 to S5. Uh, there is also a, a central stenosis at L4, L5. So I just uh, I did a fenestration procedure. So uh, I was able to uh, improve the lumbar uh, lordosis from 7 degrees to 45 degrees. You know? So uh, a, a big gain. So it's now uh, near the, the pelvic uh, incidence. Okay, so pelvic tilting also decreased to 11 degrees. So this is the patient now uh, with a good pain control. So actually, right now he's almost four weeks on the analgesic holiday. So in summary, PDSI is a subgroup of flat back syndrome seen among elderly patients. It was initially believed that unique lifestyles such as prolonged crouch posture during uh, agricultural work and activities of daily living as the main cause of this condition. However, it was proven later on that it's multifactorial. Loss of disc height and lumbar lordosis are the initiating factors for the cascade of events leading to imbalance and sagittal plane deformity. Non-operative treatment, such as physiotherapy and exercise, are recommended as first-line treatment. So measurement of the spinopelvic parameters for sagittal balance is very important prior to deform uh, deformity correction. Thank you for your kind attention.